we hope and expect that you guys will enjoy what this is. Um, my name is Lefteris Calamaras. I'm the managing director of Flight Sim Labs, and I want to welcome you all to this presentation. Uh, let's begin uh, by giving a little bit of history on the HP20 and what it was that made us want to do it. Um, we are simmers, first and foremost. I mean, everybody else here will understand that what we want to do is fly simulators. We enjoy it, we love it, and we develop for it. So, up to now, we are not happy with what is on the market. Uh, some models out there have great visuals, but not that great systems. Some others have, well, just not great systems. Uh, and so we just wanted to create a new presentation of this A320 that we're doing. We've already been two years in the making, and uh, I know that the first question that you guys are going to ask at the end of the show will be, when will it be released? So I'll just start from here and say, third quarter 2012, all right? So what you see is going to be released around November or December, so pretty much around November. So, a little bit of history about this A320. The Airbus A320 is uh, sharing its type with uh, another three uh, aircraft, the A318, the A319, and the A321. The 20 came first. It carries about 168 passengers and uh, can fly something like 3,000 miles. Uh, and then there are bigger uh, versions. The 321 can carry up to uh, 180 or something passengers, if I'm not mistaken. And then there are shorter versions, the 319 and the 318. The 318, the good thing about it is that it flies uh, long haul. It can go from uh, London to New York, London City Airport to New York without any stops. Uh, the beauty about the A320 family is that you don't need to be type rated separately uh, on any of these aircraft. You get one type rating, it's the same. It's common, you can go in, hop in, fly a 20 one day, from the island of Samos to Athens, and then you can fly from Munich to Stuttgart, and then you can fly from London City to New York, as long as you're not free. Uh, the details of the 320, some historic ones, the typical range that we said is of 450 passengers, which is a common load, about 3,300 nautical mile range, has a maximum fuel in tanks of about 18 tons, 18.7. 19 tons of uh, fuel, which is about 23,000 liters. Uh, it was the first commercial aircraft that was uh, equipped with digital fly-by-wire controls. So uh, it uh, featured a side stick instead of a yoke. And for a while there, the pilots just didn't know what to do with the space in front of them. It was also empty. So they decided to put a table there for lunch. Uh, the side stick proved to be very handy, very, handy, very helpful. The pilots. It's, uh, when I talk to them, they say it's much easier to control an aircraft using a stick, much more natural than a yoke. It's also a full glass cockpit, so all the displays are digital, and they have ECAM and flight control computers for flight envelope protection. So you have what's called normal laws and alternate laws. What these do is provide protection from actions that might lead to uh, situations that are critical. So you can't stall an Airbus 320 if you try if it's under normal law. You have to take all the computers off and then try to solve it. And don't worry, we did, we did plenty of that in the simulator. Uh, the first delivery of uh, A320 was uh, to Air France in 1988, 26th of March. And since then, Airbus has featured so many Airbus, uh, so many 320s, that it can take only eight months to build an A320. It's that fast and that efficient, even though it's spread out of uh, three countries. Uh, it's very successful. Uh, it has already 2,910 units delivered, and another 2,755 are still on order, on backlog, waiting to be prepared. Now, you'll see there is a very special model prepared there too. It's an amphibian. It floats on water. And if you don't know about it, <laughs> it's quite good. We tip our hat to Captain Sullenberger. What he did was amazing. Let's talk a little bit about our A320, the FS Labs A320. Uh, what it is that made us want to do it, our inspiration. We fly 
three to four times a year as passengers, most of us. Uh, I'm a pilot, I fly a Cessna 172, and I've always wanted to fly big planes. For various reasons, I didn't end up being a captain. However, this is our inspiration. I always wanted to fly this plane. The entire team always wanted to fly this plane. So this is our inspiration, as you see. Uh, pay attention to that URL. I think that country still needs your money, so... <laughs> This is our goal. Um, this is not a real picture for those of you who thought it was. It's a very complete aircraft simulation, what we did. But what, it is, what does it take to make one? What are we going to have done by the end of a product? What does it take? Well, it takes visuals. So for a complete simulation, you want to see a fine external model, a livery that you like, Hansa Air France, British Airways, Aegean, all of them. You want to see complete 2D panels. Uh, I know in the forums a lot of you complain uh, about other aircraft, other add-ons that only provide 3D, only a virtual cockpit. Something missing. Why don't you guys have a 2D panel? So we did 2D panels. And also a virtual cockpit because 50% of you want to fly in the virtual cockpit. And we listened. Systems-wise, we've got everything. Flight and engine model that's second to none, something that we're really proud of. This flight model has been simulated to the extremes, as I will talk to you about later. The FMGS, the open in the plane, the FCS, which is the electrical uh, flight control systems, and all the secondary systems that you're used to, like electrical systems, hydraulics, pressurization, all that stuff. Nothing would be complete without great ambient sounds. So we have the external ambient sounds in the product. We also have several tens of sounds in the cockpit. I, last I measured, and it's not done yet, it's about 85 different sounds in the cockpit. Uh, with that comes documentation. I know none of you will read it, because none of you will ever want to do anything but just go into the plane and fly. But we provide full documentation, flight manuals, tutorials. If you uh, bought our Concord product, which I invite you to, the Concord has an excellent tutorial that uh, took a long time to write, and it's excellent for you to take from the start to the dark to a finish when you land, let's say, from New York to London or London to New York. Uh, same with the Airbus. It will have an excellent tutorial. That's what we do. And we stand by our products. We provide technical support, which runs daily, even on the weekends. Most people say, why do you guys answer on Sundays? Well, we fly on Sundays, so we answer on Sundays. So how is it done? How do we do it? What do we do when we want to make this product? We start with the aircraft operating and maintenance manuals. They describe everything, the systems, logic, the computers, how you fly it, how you don't fly it. We also collect lots of source material. Pictures, pictures, pictures. We have, last I count, Marguerite, I will tell you, 8,000 pictures so far, and counting. Uh, we also have a great tech advisor and support team. We started there. We asked our friends, find people who can advise us we're not all knowing, these guys know everything. They tell us. We follow. Now, what about manuals? The flight crew operating manual describes the systems in detail. These go to the pilots to read. They're helpful to us, but not 100%. We follow them, but we need to listen to what the flight operations manual says as well. And most of all, the aircraft maintenance manual, which is a source of all technical details. It has uh, information about what the FMGS does, down to the detail of what fire goes and feeds the galley people <coughs> to warm it up. What source material did we collect? I have a couple of sample pictures for you. There was no hand holding here. All right, so nobody held a hand 
when we took those pictures. We did it all alone. We were in the cockpit. We took several thousand of those pictures with cold and dark, with everything lit up, overhead, just samples. I'm not going to describe them too much. You know what you're looking at. But I wanted to focus a little bit on the detail. What you see here is how close we were able to go. We got permission from our friends uh, at various airlines, the GMB being one of them. They allowed us to go up and close and did things that uh, normally you're not supposed to do with an aircraft. We went that way. We even took pictures of the galley because we thought there's not a complete simulation without a, without a, uh, a cabin in the plane. So the external model has a galley and it has a cabin. Somebody said I smell a rat. This is not one of them. This is the electrical kind. This powers the aircraft if you lose all electrics and hydraulics uh, down to something like 140 knots. We have it. Now let's talk a little bit about the external model. Starting here, you see our inspiration again. Uh, we use 3D Studio Max to model everything. Now, uh, unfortunately, Microsoft didn't leave us with many tools, so we developed a little bit of our own, and we used them to bring the polygon count of our aircraft up above what you're used to. Um, other competing products might have 50 to 60,000 polygons and say, oh, but my frame rate tanks, I get, you know, in the tens or 15 frames per second. No, nope. with our product, you have over 120,000 polygons, lots of textures, and your frame rate is still in the 60s. Now you can see the end result in max, and this is what it looks like in FS. Details, um, we went very close, as we said before. We wanted to take pictures of everything and model everything, so you see how many polygons are spared just on one wheel alone and on those rivets and on those bolts. This is the end result of Max. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but we're so very proud. This projector doesn't do it very good. It doesn't do it justice, but you can even read the label of the title. Trust me, it's says good here. Uh, speaking about 2D panels, Lots of discussion when we started this product. What 2D panel view angle is best? Most products out there, most add-ons, most aircraft, cheat. What they do is they put the PFD and the ND on the very left, and you're stuck facing something around the middle. So somewhere around here is your center point. No, we wanted to do the captain's view. So a captain, in front of him, sees a PFD and ND. Now, what's the problem? If you do that, then you lose the third display, the ECAM. So we cheated a little bit too. We brought the ECAM in action as well, and this, I hope, gives the best viewing point for the cap. Now you say, what about the slave that sits on the right? Well, he's there too. He has his own view. And if you guys want to fly together, you'll be able to in our multi-pilot version of the 320. We even have an IFR version because we intend that this product will go also to the schools and other professional places who want to train their pilots. Our 2D panels will service them too with the IFR version. You can see all the uh, lower ECAM displays and the DDRMI down here. Unfortunately, the clarity of this projector, again, is not the best and the light doesn't do it justice, but we'll be releasing those pictures on our website right after this talk. Again, on the other side, this is the panel on the first officer um, panel, first officer side. You can see the landing here and all that stuff. A complete overhead simulation is required so that all the systems can be functional. We have our overhead panel for the 20 with full COM3 radios working. I don't know if most of you know, but uh, Microsoft only simulates two COM panels and two VOR radios, etc. We have three. Thrust levers. We have them 
they work, you can set them, 